Hey guys, I have been promising you a video on sets and set notation. I know we talked about it a little bit in class, um, but here we go. Uh, so a set is just a collection of things. Collection of things. Um, and of, of course this is math. So usually what we're talking about is a collection of numbers. Um, we use sets and set notation um, when we're defining uh, domain and range. Um, that's the most uh, common thing that we're going to use sets for. Um, but it's a whole study in itself, sets and set theory and things like that. Um, so we're not going to go through the whole set theory, um, but just a couple of symbols that we're going to be using. Um, we can use little thing. You guys always confuse it. It looks like an E. Um, all this means is, is a member or element of, and then it's followed by whatever. So X is a member of the set of integers. So that would mean you would have negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can also look at this symbol. So it's the same symbol, but it's missing the line in the middle. Um, this would be is a subset of whatever. Um, so we can say that integers is a subset of the set of all real numbers. Um, so every member of the integers is also a real number. So those are the basic symbols that we're going to use. Um, we can get into the two types of set notation that we will use most often. The first one is set builder. Um, we use set builder when you have a quick description of what you are including and what you're not including. So we could look at the set of all x such that x does not equal 3. So the brackets just indicate the set. So we've got the set of what follows is the x. So the set of all x's, this little line here is such that. And then whatever follows is the description. Now I'm going to run out of room, sorry. So we've got this, the description. Um, we'll do this with looking for the domain of f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1. We know that what's inside that square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we figure out x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, which gives me x is greater than or equal to 1. So my domain is going to be the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to 1. Um, so the next most common notation that we're going to use is called interval notation. And an interval describes an interval. An interval in math is just a particular section. Now this is most similar to inequalities. If you think about it, inequalities describe a segment or a section of all real numbers. Inequalities. I keep running out of room, sorry. So um, when we're looking at interval notation, we look at the least value. Um, we determine whether it's included or not. If it's included, we use the square bracket. So this is inclusive. This is like the greater than or equal to 
Um, then it's followed by the greatest value. Again, we decide whether it's inclusive or exclusive, meaning are we going to include the five or not? So this would be like your less than. So um, these values, if we were turning it into an inequality, would be three is less than or equal to, we're talking about an X or a Y, whatever the variable is less than five. So this interval notation describes the values between three and five, including the, the three. So let's look at our parts of this interval notation. Uh, let's cover that up. That's not what I want. There we go. All right, so um, if we think about greater than or less than, Remember when we were to plot that on a number line, we would use an open circle to describe it. So that's similar to um, our dashed line when we're talking about a linear inequality. Remember you do the shading there and you'd have a broken line. Um, and that is going to uh, be the same as our rounded brackets. If we have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, this is inclusive. Let's write that up here. This is exclusive, meaning the bounds or the limits, the edges are not included. If it's greater than or equal to, that means that the bounds are included. Now, remember, if you were uh, having an inequality with a single variable, you would plot this on a number line. This would be the solid dot. Uh, this is uh, similar to that uh, solid line when you're doing linear inequalities. So you got the solid line that shows that the line is included. Again, all of this is inclusive. Inclusive. So those are going to use the square blocks. Um, so again, you look for your least value. Let's say in this case, it's zero. My greatest value, let's say 100. And then is it included or not? Here, here. And again, this is going to be similar to my zero is less than X is less than or equal to 100. Couple of other things to remember here is that infinity doesn't have an actual value to be included. So if I'm wanting to put X is greater than or equal to two, I find my least possible value is a two. I'm including it because X is greater than or equal to two. Two is a valid uh, value for that X. Now, X is greater than two. There's no limit. There's no greatest value. It's going to keep on going. So my positive infinity is my greater bound. And since infinity is not a number that we can get to, we're not going to include it. Similar, similarly, if I want X is less than negative three, I'm gonna find my least possible value. There is no least possible value because you're looking for anything that's less than or smaller than negative three. So we would use negative infinity. Similarly to positive infinity, it's not inclusive. And my greatest possible value is gonna be my negative three. This is exclusive as well because it's less than, not less than, or equal to. And there you have interval notation. Now, the other thing that um, we talk about when we are looking at sets are um, ways to combine sets. Um, the first one is an and. This is an intersection. 
meaning um, I think this is easiest to look at in a Venn diagram. So if you've got a set A and a set B, the intersection is the area that satisfies both of these. So the members that are in both of the sets is the intersection. So A intersection intersected with B would give me these values. Now, when there's an and involved, this is, this is where you've got the X is greater than two and um, X is less than five. Now it has to satisfy both. And this case is one of them that you can put together in a single inequality. You take your least value two, um, that's going to be less than my x, and x is less than five. So this is an and situation. You can write it in interval notation. Two is the least value, five is the greatest value. Neither one of them are included. We can also combine sets using or. Now, or, um, means that it only has to satisfy one of the sets, one of the descriptions, one of the, the inequalities, whatever you're using. So if I look at A and set B, even if there's nothing the same, even, there's no, even if there's no overlap, A unioned with B would include all the members of A and all the members of B. So if you look at it with inequalities, you can have X is less than two or X is greater than, let's make it equal to, greater than or equal to two, I'm sorry, four. There's no number that satisfies both of these conditions. Remember, if it's an or situation, if you were to plot this on a number line, you would have your two with the x's less than two. You got your four here, and all of the x's greater than four. Now, if you were going to put this in uh, interval notation, you would have to note that, sorry guys, I'm going to erase this, as, hold on, we're getting there. Um, you would have to list it twice. You would have, um, uh, so the x is less than 2. We've got negative infinity, not inclusive, to 2 again, exclusive, or, or the union with my least value here as four. Um, this was inclusive though, sorry. So we would make that the square bracket and that would go on to positive infinity. Now this is gonna come up with, in particular, inequalities. Um, when we talk about and and or and when situations are either. Um, so it's good to understand that the and means it has to satisfy both situations. Um, the or means anything will work. Sometimes uh, that doesn't seem intuitive. It's by grammar, it should be the other way. Um, but we will talk more about that when it comes up in class. And that is it for now on set notation.